Hi, it's Denise from Four Square Marker Farm, and this is the Spinner's Book of Yarn Designs Journey Group. Today I want to talk about drum carding. Of course, in front of me, this is a drum carder, and I, I have a similar video where I talked about carding Angora, and I kind of really got into it. So I'm not going to get quite so deep into this video, but um, if you wind up watching this one first, uh, just leave some questions in the comments and I'll fill in wherever I left off or leave them inside the group. Okay, so um, the drum carter is used to, of course, card and blend large amounts of fiber. Uh, it's two, generally two, sometimes uh, more expensive ones have three or more uh, different cylindrical drums. Um, they're covered with carding cloth. The smaller one is called a liquor in, and then this is the main drum hair. And a lot of times when it comes to carding finer fibers, the two drums will be at two different uh, teeth per inch settings. And this particular drum right here is um, a brother standard drum. I also have a smaller brother baby drum. On my, my baby brother drum, uh, both the liquor end and the main drum uh, are equipped with 72 teeth per inch carding cloth. On the standard one, I have 90 on the liquor end and 120 uh, on the large drum here. Okay, and this one is a machine, um, is a hand crank machine. So I have a handle here for this one, and it's it's a it's a decent drum carter. It gets the job done. Uh, my baby one is about four inches wide. It's really meant to make, um, it's got really deep teeth. It's meant to make art bats and rolling. Uh, and this one is, I said that this is about almost 12 inches across right here. So it produces a bat that's about eight by 20 or so on inches or more, maybe 24 inches. I have, uh, and I'll put one on to the uh, mat below and see exactly how much it comes out to. Uh, there are some other options that you can get with the drum carters. And I didn't get that option with this one. Kind of wish I had now. But you can also get a packing brush to go on top of it. And in general, instead of using a packing brush, I have a little um, a flicker brush that I use that is for the blending board that I pack it down with. Um, or sometimes a stiff bristle brush and that will go on here okay so here's the important things to know about the drum carter especially if you're a newbie you kind of think well i'm going to get a drum carter when you're processing raw wool and i'm just going to stick it in there it's going to save the day and that's not really how drum carters work um, the drum carter um, it aligns the fibers it fluffs up the fibers but it doesn't remove second cuts and debris, okay? Except for, you know, sometimes the dust and little things, VM falls out through here as you're turning it. But you have to prepare the fiber for the drum carter. Uh, if you don't prepare your fiber for the drum carter, number one, um, if you don't tease it out when you put it across the drum carter, you're gonna wind up with big chunks on the carter and, and that can mess up your teeth or it's gonna take a lot of extra passes to really get it uh, blended and smooth. Secondly, um, although some shorts and second cuts do get caught in a liquor in, uh, you're still gonna wind up with a lot of shorts and second cuts inside of the drum, inside the bat here. And you'll wind up with VM. And what it actually does is a lot of times it crushes the VM up into a little powder and distributes it all through the, the bat. So you really want to make sure that you process the fiber. Take that step to process the fiber ahead of time before you send it through the drum carter. The drum carter is not a magic clean off or raw wool or um, unprocessed wool. This is a next processing step to refine the wool after you've processed it yourself. Uh, and when you do it like that, you'll find much more success with the drum carter before you send it in. Okay. Also, too, um, I know I like to do a lot of 
grease fleeces, but here's a caveat. I always have caveats when I say that I do these things. First of all, I am washing my fleece. I'm not hot scouring it, but I am washing it. So I like to say I, I will spin in the grease. I don't spin in the dirt. So, and even still, even though I'm not hot scouring for a great many fleeces, except for those really heavy grease ones, when you cold soak it, especially if you're using a soap, when you cold soak it, um, you're still removing a little bit of lino and that grabs onto that soap and gets rinsed away. So I'm not sending raw, like right off the sheep, heavy scour fleeces through my drum carter. Um, and it will, it, depending on the fleece, it does leave a little, a little bit of residue and you may or may not want that. Um, as you can see, this, this carter is fairly clean. I think I've had it for two years now. Um, and that's because the, a lot of the finer wools I'm sending through um, I have done more washing to because they are heavy grease fleeces and otherwise they're going to be really hard to card sending them through such a fine tooth. Um, on the baby brother, it's got longer teeth and it's a coarser, so I would be more apt to send slightly greasier fleeces through it. And when you see it, it, it kind of shows. Uh, so I have to clean that one a lot more carefully than I do this one right here. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Don't just go feeding a bunch of stuff through your drum carter like it's just going to smooth everything over. Not if you want to get good results um, with the minimum amount of passes. Okay, so here I go. And I have here some relatively well-washed um, Cheviot. And I know you're thinking, if you've seen my other videos, I use Cheviot for everything. I just, I have an abundance of Cheviot. I mean, at some point I'm going to take a shot of the bag on the porch so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so here we go. Oh, I forgot to talk about the uh, doffer um, stick. And you know what? This is not even the right one. It's actually downstairs. But uh, the one I got went with the baby brother and I didn't get a new one for this one so it's really short it's really short off and uh and even still I tend to prefer to use my knitting needles um I don't know why but anyway they go all the way across for this particular one so I use my knitting needles more than anything okay so here we go I've got some relatively clean cheviot which is actually very easy to clean and it's already been flicked so it's ready for the drum carter. It's in these chunks. And all I want to do is send this guy through here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tease it out a little. It, it, that'll help greatly. If I just send it through like big watts, I mean, I could do that. I'm going to wind up with big watts all over the place. And I'm going to make a lot more passes than I may want to. So I'm going to go ahead and spread this out. And lay this across. And it's supposed to be thin enough that you can read newspaper through it. Uh, let's approximate that. Okay, so there we go. It's on the drum carter. And I am going to take it slow, okay? And I tend to be move really fast. Now, I don't want to hold on to this fiber. That's like one of my biggest pitfalls. I'm going to move the camera a little closer. Okay. Sorry about that road blind over there. Next time I promise I'll have some pretty curtains. Okay. Uh, that went pretty well. I want to talk about the setting real quick. When you get your drum carter, you can adjust the space between the main drum and the liquor in. And they say you, you want it far enough apart that you can pass a piece of paper through it. So if you're carting and you're getting a lot of fiber on a liquor end, two things to think about. First of all, you may be holding on to the fiber as it goes in. Um, when you do that, you get more on the liquor end. And also, the liquor end may be too close to the drum. So you might want to separate your distance a bit so that... Um, 
you're not getting all you will you getting more transference onto the drum and you're not getting a bunch here also too if you got a bunch of shirt fiber it does tend to cling to the liquor end or if you got fiber that's too long it does tend to cling to the liquor end so basically this is the motion And I'm just going to keep going on. There's some really important tips you want to think about. The book points out it's very important. Uh, don't overload the drum. Don't try to pack on as much as you possibly can. I would say that probably I'm going to get about two ounces, depending on the fiber, onto this drum. And I'm going to pull it off and put it to put whatever I have together. And that's how I get my four ounce bags. But I'm not trying to force a bunch on the drum. That's going to make a mess. You don't want to be hard on the Carter's teeth. And you don't want to be hard on the fiber either. Okay? And since I don't have a brush... Um, I pack it, sometimes I just kind of pack it down a bit with the, the needle there. Most of the time I use the flicker brush, which is somewhere. Those nice bore bristle brushes you get for your hair are great too. A really good wallpaper brush is a good idea. Depending on why something's on the liquor end, I might take it and run it back through again to see if it'll catch onto the drum. Okay, see I didn't I didn't handle it this time, so it went in nice and smooth. And I've got some debris still in this fiber. It comes out as I tease it, and some of it will come out. I got as much out as I could, but some of it'll come out. Let me tip it just a bit and see. Okay, I got a little dust pile underneath here. Over here, you'll see it. So some of some of the dust is still coming out. <laughs> some of it will come out when I spin. You know, it's just like that. After you wash, you can sometimes shake a skein and still get some out. But do your best to get as much as you possibly can out before you card. Okay, fluffed that out a little bit. I don't even know what that is. Probably a German Shepherd hair. Uh, gotta make sure you have enough clearance. You can't really do this on the floor because you have to have enough clearance to turn. I, I think I saw one of the drum, the brother drum carters. It sits up further off of the floor or further up. It's taller enough that you can turn the handle and sit it on the floor, which was pretty neat. Probably helped for me because I. The space is always a premium everywhere I go. Okay, so here we go. Okay, and basically that is it. Observe those caveats. And, it, you know, each drum card is a little different. But that's kind of how that works. So let me show you. I'm just going to peel this off. There's not much on there. But I'm going to peel off anyway. So you want to run it across the line. Well, I always get little extras I can out of the liquor. Because I'm just so cheesy. Okay, so now here we go. Uh, generally, when it's in its natural resting position and the handle is down, uh, you're presented with this strip across here. And this is called the doffing groove. So I'm just going to slap my pin across here. And a lot of times I would be more gentle. If the bat was thicker, I would pull up individual pieces so I don't bend my teeth or my doffing tool while I'm doing that. And you're just going to roll it in the opposite direction and peel it off the drum. Okay. Sometimes I give it a little help. This is why, that's another reason why I'm using a knitting needle because it's so thin 
And for the most part, if I am careful, I'm not going to, let me turn the camera just a bit. If I am very careful, I am not going to damage the teeth by lifting it like this, okay? They used to have these things, I don't know what they were, that they would put it uh, across the top of the teeth and then when you card it, you would lift it all up and it would be clean. I can't, oh, sorry about that. I can't even recall what it was, it's been so long ago, to look it up to see if they still have those. I thought I remember someone saying something about using uh, saran wrap or something, but I don't, I don't know how that would work out, but that would be so much cooler. Especially when I'm doing something like Angora, which is uh, a beast to get off the teeth. Okay. But under normal circumstances, this whole thing would lift and pull off. Or you really wouldn't even be worrying about it because you're going to run this thing through again to make a second pass. Or you're going to add more fiber so you don't have to be obsessive like me and make sure that... It, no little bit clings to here. You could just pull it right off and call it a holiday. All right. Okay, so that is down. I've got my bat type thing. Okay. It looks great. It looks like it's about 20 inches or so, roughly. And it just kind of poofs and pops, puffs up, pops off like that. Now, a lot of times what you want to do is to get a really smooth bat. You want to split this in half and run this back through the carter again. And depending on what you want from a bat, what fiber it is, what you did to it prior to putting it in there, you may want to run it two or three times, okay? Every time you run it through, it's gonna come out smoother. In this case, it doesn't really matter to me but when I am making bats to sell, uh, of course, depending on the color work, I will send them through. And a lot of times what I do is when I have multiple colored bats, I will send through a bat um, with just one color. I will card that several times and then I will put the different colors onto the drum carter for one final pass. That way I'm not blending colors if I'm not trying to blend colors. Okay, so... Uh, storing bats, you could take the whole bat in your hand, um, wind it in a ball if you want, and store it like this. Depends on how you feel about that. Sometimes I, I treat them almost like I'm winding roving and I store them. Uh, sometimes I just wrap them, cocoon them, store them, depending on the size. If they're really big bats, I fold them in. I fold them over and store them like this. Okay, sometimes I will roll them and tie them for storage. There's a couple different ways. All right, now, anyway, that's kind of like a little sidebar at the bottom of the page. I figure I'd say something about it. Okay, so when you're blending fibers on the drum carter, which I really like to do when I'm doing Angora or soft blends, um, how much you blend depends on what it is that you're trying to make. So even though it's included in this section on drum carding, I'm not really going to go into um, so much blending on a drum carter. It's just make sure you space the fibers evenly and that you get enough passes that it blends well. But I do want to talk about color blending. Okay. You know, there's two, really, I think of it as two types of color blending. You can blend to turn two colors into one. Maybe you want to, you have something that's blue and you have something that's green and you want to make something that's turquoise. You know, the basic color blending. And then you are blending colors to make a multicolored bat in a particular way. Okay? So... I have the orange and let me swivel this here. I have a purple 
and this is some sort of maroon-ish type thing and surprisingly enough I don't have any green okay so I thought I had a blue here too but maybe not this one okay so I like to paint on the drum carter do a lot of painting on the drum carter okay so here we go I like I said I like a lot of times I like to cart this all up first pull it off and then treat it like a individual bat because I need these fibers to be smooth okay there's me in speed demon mode I so I really have to watch that okay obviously I sent that one in too thick and it'll happen, especially when you're talking and carting. So I'm just going to peel that up. Send that back to you. Got some of the liquor in. I want that off. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and peel this all off. See how that smoother that actually came off since I'm not obsessing about it. That's the purple. I'm going to follow it up with the maroon kind of wine color. That needs to be fluffed. And you're going to watch this blend because these are actually two different colors. And I'm going to run them together as if they're one. And since I'm only going to do it once, they're going to blend in some places and leave the same in other places. That's a little chunky right there, so I'm going to spread that out. There we go. Okay, so you can see I've got three colors now. I've got a purplish over here. Something that's sort of purplish, fuchsia. Something that's kind of a very light pink. Something kind of mauve -y, And something a little different over here. So I've got a blend of the two colors that were there. A little bit of what was white. Still on the drum carter. A little bit of what was purple still on the drum carter. And I could really blend this if I was trying to do a blend with this particular one. I could really blend it further to get a more uniform color. Okay, so here we go. And now I'm going to run the orange through. Just fluff it up a little. Okay, no, I am not going to send it through like that. <laughs> There's so much this on here. Okay.
It's one of my failings is I, I'm t always turning this thing like it's a race against time. But another caveat is that my fiber is flicked. It's well prepared ahead of time, so. And I'm not trying to send in a big chunk of roving or something either, so. It's well prepared. Okay. And there was a chunk of blue. I thought there was some blue somewhere. This is from the Sunset Bats. So there should be some blue in there. Okay, you can see the color it's picking up because the drum is not clean. So, run this through, and what I'll have is some individualized little bats that I'm going to use to paint on the gun powder. There we go. All right, now, I've got three different colors. Well, actually, it's more like four. And I'm just going to place them on the drum corner where I want them. I'm going to paint them on. And I could line them up and send all four up one time. To it I'm kind of wishing I had uh, well we all laid on real quick I had laid the fuchsia slash pinkish on both sides because there's a whole lot more of it than there are the other colors okay I'm gonna go ahead and see Kind of squeeze that onto that side over there. Be careful about putting it so close to the edge that it goes into the gears. You really want to be careful about that. Okay. So, more orange. And this is going to be the kind of bat you pull apart in strips. So the person can spin this bat straight across or they can pull it into strips and spin it to separate the colors. Okay, now I'm going to stick this purple on. After the blue... Let's see where it winds up at. Yeah, here we go. It'll be as wide as the strip I put on there. So if I want just a skinny part of it, I have to make sure to make a skinny strip. And getting it as far over as I can. Okay, now on the camera, yeah, you can see the four different colors pretty well on here. Okay, a little, little skinny strip of that. I'm going to make sure it's not going over the edge.
pull out little skinny strip. And it's blending along the edges. We have a little bit of blue left. bit of purple, a little bit of fuchsia, and I'm going to put those two side by side. Okay. I'm going to send the orange and the fuchsia through side by side. And actually, look how neatly they line up here. I mean, uh, that actually worked out really well. And I can also put the fiber up here and paint it through as I turn. But I do have to say I like the added benefit of going through the liquor in. Okay, so I'm going to clean off the liquor and see what I have here. Like I said, you, you could just throw away what the liquor picks up. It depends on what the liquor picks up and why it picks it up. A lot of times for me, it picks it up because I'm holding onto the fibers as I'm feeding them in. A lot of times too, it just, it picks up junk. So you don't really want to reuse what's on the liquor. Not really. You have to kind of evaluate that one for yourself based on uh, what it is you're doing. Okay, and so this is the, the painted, well, this is the color blend it slash um, color building on the drum carter. Okay, I'm going to stop there because this is becoming a pretty lengthy video. And so I think the next time I'm going to talk about um, using a Diz and some wild bats. And then uh, making the punis from there. And then we'll get on to the actual spinning. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for watching. Go on over to uh, the Facebook group. Uh, if you're not watching this there and join us for our journey through the Spanish Book of Yarn Designs. I put up some thoughts and questions inside uh, the discussion section and some units. So go ahead through those units and... Uh, Answer the questions there and have a little conversation. Um, thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you can, click the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. And please leave some comments in the video or inside the group. I'm always willing and happy uh, to grow in my video making and also uh, in my sharing. And I can only do that if I get feedback from others. Have a great day. Oh. So after I turned the video off, it occurred to me that you probably want to see me take this bat off of uh, the drum recorder. So, hey, I could do that. Um, I also have some more fibers I thought maybe I would put on this particular bat. So uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to lift this bat off. And then I'm going to cart these as a separate bat. Because I could probably pack this guy in with another two ounces of fibers. And then I will either on um, Facebook, well, actually, why not all of them, Facebook or Instagram, uh, I will, and in a group, I will fold the completed bat together so you can see me put the layers on top of each other. And that's pretty much kind of what you would get if you got a bat from me. So let me at least show you how I'm going to lift this off. Okay, so because there's more of this on here, I'm actually going to take my time to pull up the fibers carefully. Instead of just running the needle across like a crazy. Okay. Okay, now, like, like the book suggests, ideally you should be able to lift up and pull off. And you're actually kind of tucking these fibers backwards. I'm just going to run this one under here. For the moment 
But if you tuck them really nicely, if you turn, they do pull off most of the time fairly cleanly. And it, like I said, it does depend on whatever fiber I'm doing, I'm using, how clean I can get it off in one pull. This one's going to fight me, but they don't always. Sometimes they actually really do come off really cleanly, really nicely. So there it is off.